Cheers. Cheers. Test video number two, getting line of sight. All right, we've got two challengers on the map today. We've got a Warhammer and an Awesome. And this is going to be an example of gaining line of sight. We're not going to roll any movement dice, and we're not going to roll, we're not going to fire. We're just gaining line of sight. I'm going to go over briefly the conditions that cause you to lose line of sight. Alright, so starting positions, we've got our awesome here, hidden behind a level one turret, or I'm sorry, level three turret. And we have our Warhammer over there, also behind a level three turret. So the mechs are assumed to be level two in height. Both of them are on level one ground which would give them a height of level 3. But because they have adjacent blocks that are level 3, their line of sight is completely blocked. Alright, so since neither one of them have line of sight, we're going to need to move them out of into where they have line of sight. So the awesome is going to go first, and it can walk 3, run 5. So we're going to do a twist, there's one, there's two, there's three. Alright, so now he's no longer behind level three cover. Now the rule of line of sight is from center of hex to the target's center of hex. And anything that passes in between can affect. So up until we get to this level two, now remember the Warhammer is considered a level 3 in height right now for line of sight purposes. All the way up until we get to the turret which is also a line of level 3 he would have line of sight. So the Awesome does not have line of sight on the Warhammer but as an example we'll use this ruler from center of hex to center of hex traveling through each one of these hexes all the way up until he gets to that level 3, he would have line of sight. The Warhammer can move, walk 4, run 6. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, and 4. We're in an off angle, so we need to determine from center to center. So the Warhammer's taking his turn here, and we are going out of sequence just as an example. So because we're not very fancy here, we're going to do this. Center of hex to center of hex to this is to demonstrate how intervening hexes will have effect. Alright, so both of them are on level 1, but our line travels through a level 3 hex here. So that would block the line of sight again. Back to our awesome. So our awesome has <coughs> our walk of three, run of five. So we have a choice where we can move forward and try and gain line of sight, or we can move over and try and gain line of sight. So we're going to move over. So one, two, three, four, five. On this hex. Our line of sight moves through a level 2. Because that Warhammer is on a level 3, we can see him. Because we can see him. A level 1. Level but one. yeah, his total yeah, height his, is level 3. His total height is level 3. But because we can see him, he can see us. Now, in this case, a level 2 height would cause a. Uh, intervening terrain modifier. In this case it would be 
plus one to hit. Okay. I guess just to reiterate, line of sight is mutual. Right. LRMs, in a scenario where you're using LRMs, LRMs do have a direct fi indirect fire capability. In this case, let's say that our Warhammer pilot here is a chicken shit. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So now he's back into cover. He lost line of sight. I mean, the little guy over there. Which you want that little guy? Yeah, that little guy. For an example, even though this awesome doesn't have LRMs, we're gonna put we're gonna put our little uh, stinger here on the battlefield as a spotter. So if our awesome had LRMs, because our little stinger here has line of sight on our warhammer, our awesome would be able to engage indirect fire. Can I go through some scenarios real quick? With the magic of the internet. All right, so we're in depth of one water for both of our mechs here. We're gonna use a scenario where, because they don't have line of sight, our awesome is equipped with some LRMs. And our chicken shit Warhammer pilot wants to break line of sight with the Stinger. So he has a couple of options. He could try and move away to where he could no longer be seen by the Stinger, or he can go prone in the water because a prone mech is considered level one and depth water, water of a depth of one would provide complete concealment. Standard movement modifiers to get him to get into the prone position and now he is completely submerged, submerged and no longer, the stinger no longer has line of sight. In this instance, the only way that combat could be initiated is if the stinger was to move to an adjacent hex of the Warhammer and then attempt melee combat with him. Good luck with that one. In this scenario, we have two level twos, but our awesome here is standing on a level three turret, which gives him an effective height of five. Our Warhammer is on a level one, so he has an effective height of three. So the adjacent their intermediate of level two has no effect on line of sight because the height of both the target and the attacker are above it. Do a uh, light woods next and light woods. See if we can. In this scenario, our wasp is trying to get line of sight for our awesome to again shoot LRMs. Now, because we have an inter intervening set of light woods directly adjacent. This would add a targeting modifier of plus one. So he does have line of sight, line of, even yeah. though it's at level zero, so max have height two, right. and all woods have height two. two. And he is on a depth one. Okay, so in this scenario, he's looking through the light woods, which would have given him a modifier of of plus one to hit. How that affects LRMs will be for another video. What else? I don't see any heavy woods. No, I don't see any heavy woods on the map. So heavy woods completely blocks line of sight. All right, I think that's pretty much it. On this map, anyway. <laughs> On this map, anyway. There are, you know, obviously much different varying terrains, so.